Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Karo Hono no Goku in episode number uh, in 8, 19 and 20. Sorry, I kind of forgot which episode it was. Uh, episode number 19 and 20 reaction. All right, uh, the previous two episodes, um, it was uh, like, you know, it was, uh, what can I say? Episode, uh, the first episode was very sad. The next one, I can say there was a little portion which made us happy because uh, Leon was able to overcome, you know, and he's back with his uh, golden armor. Now, that was the happy part, but at what cost did it come? Um, the first episode where we can see, like, you know, Leon meets um, Alphonse who comes to their village and he talks with him they kind of converse about the whole situation alphonse apologizes he's like yeah i was a little bit you know like too harsh i thought later on that um i i probably would have like you know done the same thing if i was in your shoes but leon is like okay it's fine like you know like like everything's going well i found my place here you know and you know i'm going to stay here i found someone like you know people to protect so like it was a really good start you know i was like oh it's like you know, everything's going well uh, maybe in the future he'll take up his arms but for now he at least found his place and oh boy in comes a horror who like you know like just just like just doesn't let that happen um the whole situation was very like you know difficult to counteract because first of all uh, the people there were farmers their livelihood depended on the seeds and Leon did not actually tell them that, oh, um, like, you know, Prince Alphonse is someone who, like, you know, like, I, like, you know, is one of my, uh, like, you know, acquaintances. And that's the reason why they went back, probably, you know, the, especially the old uh, man, the grandpa, went back to try to get the seeds back. While Alphon uh, Leon was off on his way to warn Alphonse. So, you know, if, if they actually knew that, yeah, even if the seeds are gone, you know, uh, Prince uh, Alphonse will help us maybe they could have chosen a different path but yeah like everything went wrong they like you know they like they lost their lives over there Lara as well uh, by the time uh, Alphonse was able to come and defeat the horror and yeah Leon loses everything again and uh, it, it felt like he was again probably going to relapse into the previous like you know like the whole revenge thing but turns out in the next episode we can see he actually just like you know doesn't let the like you know that thing that dark thing that alter ego within him to uh, you know like gain advantage on him he just like you know brushes it away he goes to alphonse and says like i want my armor back i need to like you know i want people to protect uh I, yeah i want to protect the people and the fight the fight was amazing uh fantastic like you know <laughs> choreography the art like you know animation and everything was so well done and um, yeah um, uh, leon wins and we leon is able to get his uh, armor back garo goes back to him and you know you know like we're back with uh, garo and gaia and both of them like are now again protecting the people while on the other hand um ermen you know that whole thing with uh, himena you know, like like uh, happens <laughs> and uh, Ermen tries to like you know not tries but he leaves later on because he has like an, a new uh, job which is to I guess uh, cooperate with Mendoza and he comes to his uh, like you know uh, child and his nephew and tells them that yeah I will have to cooperate with Mendoza here I wanted to tell you guys that bye bye and he leaves and all of them are confused we are also confused why is he going to like you know cooperate with him what did Khan tell him hopefully we get our answers here so yeah let's see so this is episode number uh, 19 of Garo Honono Kokuin so yeah let's get started I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here Think it whichever is a preference and let's start okay here's the countdown three two one go Luciano Okay, this will be I'm guessing focused on Emma this episode 
certain horror. <laughs> like the amount of shock in this scene was immense. At first they got to know that Mendoza is still alive and then he's going to help him. Is that Garm? He looks a lot different. What is she? Hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Emma. Wait, what? What? Luciano. Okay. Wait, was that like a prophecy or did she just is like saying that, oh, she's in trouble. Like whatever she's going to do is going to be trouble. So she might die. Or was that like a genuine prophecy? Like, oh, she's going to die in the future. Like, I'm sure I'll get my answer. <clears throat> All right, Tempest. What is it trying to do? Yeah. Yeah, he has his kingly duties. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's that's Emma, isn't it? Damn, the disguise. Emma, I think. Or am I wrong? Wait, I'm, I'm wrong. I thought that was Emma in disguise. Okay, it's a horror. Never mind. Okay, that's Luciano. So this is a horror. Oh, yeah, okay. Yo, girl, run. Yeah. He reminds me of Spike. I'm like, where have I seen his face before? Spike from Cowboy Bebop. I'm like... Okay, some promise. All right. Oh my god. Damn. Whoa. 
Okay. Whoa, he she made the whole okay. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. Damn. Okay. He used that against him. Ah. Oh. Oh my god. Nah, he, he would have killed you and then run away. Okay. Uh, just a mark on that horror. Oh, nice, Zaru. <laughs> oh, it's nice to have like you know a different perspective. Like you know, the horror is like an indi Zaru is an independent working. Yeah. Hmm. You did say that you're going to die. Hmm. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Reason. Well, there you go. Who's the man? Oh, wait, is his brothers? Her brother or something? They kind of look the same, you know? <laughs> they kind of look the same, uh, Emma and... Um, what's his name? Luciano. Oh, hu wait, what? Husband. Oh, okay, makes sense. I thought, okay, because the same title, I thought it was maybe a sib her sibling or something. My, what is happening here? What the? This is a flashback. They oh that okay that was that scene the the, the two rings okay. So I'm guessing the horror got to him after he died or somehow let even like you know negativity in his heart. So I guess they were partners or something. Yeah. Okay, he's also an alchemist. Oh no, this is where he gets affected, I think. Uh. 
Mm. <sighs> My God, I'm I'm getting reminded at, of Spike as, as you know as as I'm looking at him. There was a way to prevent. Wait, are these Makai Knights? Those three people? Oh no, here we go. Ah, okay. All right. If the humans have became horrors. Damn, ironic, he himself became a horror. Save them before, okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh wait, is this a lady? Oh no. Yeah, it's the lady. Oh god. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Wow, like, look at the difference you can see, you know, like, like, now Leon and Alfonso both wants to save people as well, but if it goes into, like, in, like, you know, in this type of, uh, like, you know, like, obsession, it can actually affect people negatively, like this, you can see, and, like, this is going into, like, oh, God. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Comrades. I think they... Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, wait. So are these Makai Knights? These three that we are seeing? They don't look like Makai Knights. Like, 
her distrust for Makai Knights probably because of that Paola Hena okay Yep, he has changed, you know. I feel like Emma's kind of really kind of going in that territory, you know, of becoming a hot like I wouldn't be surprised if that really happens. Oh. Like her obsession. <laughs> what the hell is that? Is that a trap? <laughs> no, what is that? It's a trap or Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Up. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, that's a uh, okay. Whoa. What? What is that? Oh. <laughs> therefore, okay. Interesting. Oh my, this thing is like full on fighter jet. Wow, okay. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. God damn this animation! <laughs> oh my god! Alright, oh! Oh my- Oh no! Does she have a spare? I don't think she does. Okay, she, okay, okay, there you go, she. Whoa. Oh, is that why? That's why he always comes here. The town looks like his... Whoa, what is... Wait, is that like a... No, no, wait, he, he's still alive. Or, or, I don't know. Oh, he's still alive. Oh my god. Oh, okay, okay. He, at least he's out of it, I think. Oh no 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 he's not back. He's not back. I thought at least Whoa. Okay. Oh okay. Damn, she has some cool gadgets. Oh no, wait, what? Oh, okay. I was, I thought she got impaled. So 
So that was not her hair. That was like a. I guess, I guess that was like another type of a gadget or something. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? All right, I was not expecting that. That came from <laughs> out of nowhere. What? Oh boy. Oh whoa, what the Alright, that was I wasn't expecting this. But okay. Oh well, that's where it ends. Okay. Alright, um I guess we like you know we we get to know what what what's the whole deal with emma now like the reason why she's tracking down the certain horror we know the reason and everything and my god i <laughs> that that guy really looks like spike spiegel i'm like you know like uncannily like i, I don't know if, if someone put that character model beside spike at the distance i wouldn't be able to recognize who is who like that's how similar they look like their the hairstyle their face and everything like my god <laughs> like i was really like at that first i was really i was thinking wait a minute where have i seen this type of a character before and then i realized okay that's spike <laughs> okay Oh, that the, the black uh, feather makes sense now so much. Okay, uh, that was that was Luciano's, I think. So who's the white feather of? I don't know. All right, so this episode, um, interesting. We kind of go on a different, uh, you know, direction uh, because the previous episode we saw like Erman coming and saying, "Oh, I'm going to help Mendoza out," and. Um, I thought like we we're going to get a little explanation here, but no, no explanation. But we do go on a different mission here. First of all, we mm, go meet and Garm again, Garm, and uh, with uh, Leon and Alphonse go and meet her, and she's playing. What is that game called? I always forget the name of the game. Um, Othello. Is it called Othello? The the board game that she was playing. I think so. Or am I mistaken? I think it's called Othello or something like that. But yeah, she, like, you know, she's playing that on her own and she, she doesn't even answer any question. And Zaruba's like, yeah, I've known this lady for a bit too long and I know that when she doesn't want to say anything, she will never say anything. So it's useless to ask her. And she just brings up another thing. She's like, oh, uh, Emma's going to die. And <laughs> yeah, and. At, at first I thought it was like, is that like a prophecy or something? But no, I'm guessing she just said that because she realized that where she's going and the mission that she's going to do is going to kill her if she doesn't, you know, like, uh, properly do it. Now, interesting thing here, 
I, I didn't realize at first. The, f the first thing that we see after that is Emma using that ring to see the town. Now, in the end, as we see, the ring probably had something with it, within it, wasn't it? Like, or, or was it, I don't know. Like, it, it felt like, in the end, the ring was gl glowing. It was something kind of like, you know, symbols appearing. And, like, you know, the, the horror started burning or something. I'll go back to that scene and see it again properly. Was that like, um, I don't know, was that like, uh, like some kind of augmented ring? You know, like some kind of, it had some magical power or something? Was that why it was like that? Probably, because she has a lot of gadgets, which, you know, like, so I'm, I'm guessing the ring, probably she kind of tweaked it. it, it I, I do really understand, it was probably, it, it was her engagement ring, I'm guessing, or her managing, whatever you call it. So she probably, like, you know, just tweaked it or did something to it, I'm guessing. That's why it affected the other, or, or was it something else? Okay, I'll talk about it when I go to that part. So first of all, yeah, she is in this town and she talks about Luciano. Um, and we've always heard, like, you know, before uh, in the previous episode that she's trying to find some horror. And, like, the Luciano name came up. So here we go. We kind of get our answer here. Uh, what, what is her actual goal? So here Alphonse says, like, oh, I'll be busy with my own thing. Like, you know, trying to uh, find answers about the whole uh, mendoza Ehrman situation and I have my own like you know kingly duties as well so I'll be at the palace and Leon was like yeah I'll go and see if like you know if I'm able to help him out and here we go now we go to that scene where Luciano comes in and oh boy at first I thought that was Emma <laughs> you know I thought that was Emma in disguise like they look so similar you know Luciano and Emma like they look so similar like I for a moment I even felt they were siblings or something but okay so like you know like we see Luciano uh, and he's like walking around and there's this lady he's she's like oh like you know like want to come in and he he, he tried to consume her but in comes um, uh, Emma and she's like yeah I got to like after so much time and Right, and then the fight begins. The, the lady runs away. The other lady she runs away, and the fight begins. And oh boy, we, I, we can actually see how much gadgets or like you know, I'm guessing the tools that she uses. Uh, Emma has first of all this is like you know fire like you know thing with the, the coins which exploded in fire, and then she has like this net like you know like a spider's web all across the place, just ready. To stop him kind of like a barrier I guess it works and Luciano starts flying I was not expecting him to start flying but <laughs> yeah and okay they, they start fighting and everything and Luciano stabs her thankfully Leon comes in saves her at that moment like she he would have killed her at that time I'm guessing so Leon being here kind of helped out but at the same time her him coming here actually made Luciano I think Luciano just just pushed him into the barrier and the barrier broke and he was able to run away so that happened that's why that's why Emma was kind of angry Emma was like, like don't like you know involve with me anymore and I was almost able to get him but she she would have died if she died like you know like who would have got him gotten him he would have run away either way you know like if she died so yeah okay so okay now she was kind of freaking out and then zaru was like oh i've already <laughs> put a tracker on him now this is the thing you know it's kind of helpful because since zaruba and leon has like two uh, two different individuals um leon thinks in one way and if he misses something zaruba can support it in that way you know like since they are both individual people like if Leon is actually, uh, you know, like focusing on the battle in the heat of battle, he wouldn't have time to actually, you know, put the tracker, this and that, all these things. He wouldn't have that time. So Zaruba can do that, <laughs> kind of like an assistant, you can call him. And um, yeah, he he put a tracker on him, and he's like, ah, I'll be able to know. So Emma like settled down a little bit, and then we go to that diner, and here we start talking about the whole situation. Emma says like, oh, I am actually trying to track this uh, horror down 
and like you know and, and kill him and she says about her like you know distrust on for the makai knights she doesn't trust them and uh you know, after a lot of conversation uh she's like all right then let's make a trade you know you give me information as leon said zaruba has a lot of information um you give me information and i'll give you anything and that's when he says like all right so the reason why you're tracking it down and trying to get it and here starts the flashback or recollection you can say and here we get to see the story of luciano and um emma so here's the thing i at this moment i thought that when he said like oh luciano gunsman um zaruba says like you know i have a lot of uh guzman sorry not gunsman sorry guzman um i have a lot of information about him and i was like all right so same title they must be siblings because as i said i thought they looked extremely similar you know both emma and luciano so much similar you know like their their like you know, their style and everything even their face kind of looks a lot similar i thought they were like siblings or something <laughs> but no turns out it was her husband and it makes sense so here we go the flashback starts we get to know like they were obviously partners both of them were Markai alchemists and now the reason why they not they sorry emma is so not trusting of the Markai knights is because what happens after this i guess so okay so let me check that part out uh these people uh like you know, uh, emma and um luciano they stop the horror at that scene and uh, the horror has like you can see like in the horse like going away there's like a wedding ring on the horse fingers and in comes well, no where is it where do does those okay here we go some people come in we'll take over for now you alchemists should stand back you can go ahead and rest at the boss. oh so they're people from the boss dog center they're not makai knights wait so no or, or are they I don't think they are so who are they like like they laugh they start going on horseback yeah these are not makai knights they i'm guessing they defeat the horror after that so now you know what's actually bothering me i feel like they're not makai knights then why does emma has have this hatred towards makai knights like she should have like the hatred for the watchdog center people not the makai knights or are like are they like the same thing i guess you can call makai knights also take orders from the watchdog center is that the reason i'm guessing probably yeah i'm guessing that's the reason so like ultimately they are like the like you know the they, they give them instructions the makai knights and something like that i guess so let me know are, are these actually Ma i don't think these are makai knights they, they they they're probably someone some people something else like they, they were riding horses but then they didn't look like makai knights and they called themselves like you know like said oh you can go and rest at the watchdog center so it's obvious that they are from the watchdog center i'm guessing that's why she does not trust makai knights because makai knights apparently walk for the watchdog center people so yeah anyways okay so <clears throat> yeah the next scene we can see the lady the, i'm guessing the wife of that horror when that horror was a person and she you know she's like blaming them and you know, crying and all and we can see like you know like luciano's like this type of a um thing like she he he's, he's thinking about how to help the people before they become horrors because once they become horrors after killing them like you're not saving them you, you you're just like you know like i don't know you, you're just protecting them from like you know that situation that that doesn't make the situation better it makes the situation worse the so loved ones of the horrors they're going to be affected and yeah probably they might also become horrors there's like i'm guessing there's like a 60 to 70 percent chances of the family members of the horrors to become horrors because of the sadness of their deaths might affect them so much so this is like a cycle or something unless and until like you know everyone gets wiped out so yeah he, he's thinking about how 
to stop them anyone from becoming horrors how to do that which is which is a tough thing you know like you, you need to actually i don't know make like this is something that the, the only person that can do something about this is the person themselves you know unless and until they can you know like harden their you know like heart or like you know something like that and not let negative emotions affect them it's impossible to do this thing like how how can how can we even prevent this from happening because each and every person has a different personality different emotions how they get affected by something everything differs from people to people so some person might take like one day to become a horror after like you know their loved one dies just like you know like that lady we see in the end uh, some people might take like a few weeks some people might not turn at a horror at all if they're able to like you know fight that off so it differs from people to people so how do you even do this and here again like he now i was just saying this you know like he we can see luciano has this like you know this type of a um, kind of burning desire to protect people and help them out so it goes so deep that it actually turned into a negative thing for him you know like he frets about it so much blames himself about it so much blames everyone else about it so much you know all those people who were just laughing around those makai uh, not makai sorry those watchdog center people and you know he blames his in own in inability to help them you know these things these negative things and are like you know, affecting him so much because he wants to help the people out and he's unable to and that's why this happened he he got affected by a horror which is interesting to see since leon was also in the similar situation but leon actually like, you know like protecting people he took that in a very uh, i can say you can say different way you know like he did not let it go into the negative territory like yeah i feel that's uh, and like the circumstances you know like i'm guessing like everything everything kind of affected him for example as i said those makai uh, not makai sorry i can't tell the watchdog center people they were also kind of you know very nasty which probably affected him negatively the people also blaming him and you know the whole situation all these things probably just affected him so much that he kind of went into like a negative direction even though his um wish was a positive one which is helping people out while you can't say the same thing for leon because for leon you can say like people who are beside him are very supportive like alphonse herman and you know i i've not seen anyone blaming him or who knows maybe it happened off camera <laughs> i don't know so yeah but but he's 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 like you know leon is strong enough to i i, I feel like at, at least like after um going through so many things leon is strong enough to just resist all of that anyways um so yeah like we see him getting affected he's just doing like you know his research or whatever uh, and just you know tr trying to like you know find some way to help the people out and oh boy i i i, I you know what i feel like um uh, I don't know. I feel like Emma probably blames herself as well for him turning out to be a horror because as you can see She really did not understand the whole situation the severity of the whole situation up until the end When she he turned into a horror that's when he re she realized like oh he was suffering so much Like he knew she knew he was suffering. She knew that but she did not realize that it was in this extent that a horror would actually affect him I feel like I'm, I'm guessing she probably also blames herself for that as well because you know she's she's his his wife and being unable to see that oh my like you know my my partner is suffering so much she probably blames her for that whole situation a lot like being too late to help him out ah uh. But yeah, like, and then we again see, you know, like, like the, the lady we saw before uh, with the with the earrings, she became also a horror. He gets even more affected by it. And yeah, that was like the last rope, I think, for him. And he's just trying to do more things. Like we can see Emma trying to help him out, saying like, oh, we should go somewhere else. Like, you know, just live our old life there or something. But it did not work. He has this 
this obsession towards helping people so much that it went to a negative territory and you know like in the end we see him turning into a horror black feathers and he just rushes out and emma realizes that yeah it was too late and oh boy here we go then uh, emma tries to you know like tell the people uh, like the watchdog center people that oh i'll i'll defeat him but the people are like nah you you are his wife so you're probably going to be a horror very soon as well because you know like you probably become depressed and something so it's going to affect you as well so nah we can't trust you and that makes her even more like like what a weird thing like you know they them saying this affected her even more like you know I, I wouldn't blame the whole situation if she turned out to become a horror after that just because they actually denied her to go and attack like you know fight for uh fight luciano like, because of that maybe she turned into a horror like that would be completely like yeah but anyways okay and she says everything all of this to um leon and leon is like all right i am going to be there i won't interfere but at the same time if something tries to becomes happens to the city i am going to like you know destroy like or defeat luciano so keep that in mind like you know, if something unless and until something some harm comes to the city i'll be a bystander if something happens or if it's going to happen i will step in and uh yeah and in comes luciano emma was ready with her gadgets that was a cool one i thought at first i thought it was basically harpoons or something but no it was just flying hooks <laughs> which was interesting she like you know just started uh swinging on them using them using her gadget makai tools or whatever you call them and yeah that that scene was fantastic you know like within the clouds she was kind of gliding in just moving from one uh, hook to another and oh, that was really good and here after like you know like fighting that that was a fa fantastic fighting scene after fighting for a little while she was high up so she realizes after looking at the town the town was very similar to their town i think yeah no no oh i think maybe this is the place where they got married or something is that why or no 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 if that was why they she wouldn't remember that no it's probably something else like she says that you've wanted to come here or something like that she says i think yeah something like that so i'm guessing it's probably a like you know thing of memory for luciano here so okay now in the end we kind of see her falling down she throws a ring now here's the part yeah she probably tweaked something on the ring didn't she like there's like symbols coming out and it yeah it kind of explodes or does something and the you know the, the armor cracks they fall down and he grabs emma okay now here's the part she says that so that's how it is you've always wanted to come back here Wait, so is that the same town? If it is, then why did she not recognize it? I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. Like, if this was like the same town that she wanted to, he wanted to come back. I mean, we see those flashbacks, you know, like them kissing on the like, thing. So, why was she not recognizing the place? Like, they even, like, you know, she even, talk, like, you know, she knew the name of the place. Oh, maybe, okay, okay, maybe, no, 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 I think I was right. Maybe the place looks like that place so she he as a horror probably just like you know came here because you know like of instinct or something like that 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 would explain the situation okay and he he tries to consume at, at first i thought okay maybe he's out and he's almost going to die you know in the end as we see when they're going to die they kind of come back to their senses i thought that was happening but no he tries to consume emma but emma was ready for that and okay so her hair was an, like you know like a extension of the gadget or something she twists her hair off and uses it as a 
No, 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 no. Oh, I thought it was, sorry, sorry. Her hair was not a gadget. <laughs> sorry, I saw that scene again. <laughs> I thought that her hair was also part of her gadget. No, that was her hair. But she basically, like, you know, I think, like, it was already kind of, like, you know, like, probably cut and just tied, tied into her head. She took it off and used her strings to kind of harden it, I think, kind of twisted throughout and used it to just, uh, it's probably something like that, yeah. That's what he did. And then they fall, Dion catches her and Luciano dies. And yeah, then like, you know, in the, in the tavern, I'm guessing they're drunk, uh, 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 Emma's drunk. <laughs> Leon was using the alcohol to, um, you know, like, you know, kind of, uh, what do you call it? Like treat her. Yeah. Treat her. But she, I think she was consuming the alcohol. <laughs> oh. And yeah, so. Okay, and then like that scene I was not expecting at all that came out of the blue. You know, she, probably because she was drunk or something, I'm guessing. Yeah. And yeah, that's where it ends. So. Okay, like the whole Luciano thing, I guess, is over. So. Let's start the next one. Now. <clears throat> So I'm guessing the whole Emma, like, you know, like the, the, the mystery behind Emma, that's it for it. I don't think there's anything else, um, because it was like, kind of like a mysterious thing. Like what, what is her goal? What's she trying to do this and that? And we have that in front of her. So I'm guessing there won't be any more stuff with Emma. She will be there, I'm guessing, but like, you know, nothing related to her story or something would happen. I'm guessing we're going to jump back to Mendoza and airman like that scene so let's see what happens this is episode number 20 of garo hono no kokuin so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's a countdown three two one go mm-hmm <laughs> Order, yep. He's saying it's worth doing, which is kind of interesting way to... Yeah. What the hell is this place? Oh, it's a... Why is it so? Oh my god, it's of what's her name? Ophelia? Yeah. Ah, yo! <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't trust her. Yeah, she's she just leaves. <laughs> Wait. Wait, her name is also Laura? Oh no, that's Lara and it's Laura. Okay. Oh great. As always. People are going to talk behind everyone's back. Oh yeah, her hair. The alcohol. <laughs> Oh no! Yo, stop Zaruba! Stop Zaruba! 
Yeah. What? Oh God, is this a failure? Hmm. <clears throat> All right, double dealer. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Possible that made it look. Yeah, obviously. But I'm wondering about the reason. Hmm. Oh. Octavia, there you go. Not Ophelia, Octavia. Oh God, I always. Oh, wait, okay. So that's why he's suspecting her. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Is what happened? Like is is her is his dad becoming better? Recovering. Hmm. Okay, wait, so nephew, isn't it? Leon is his nephew. Is that how it goes? What, alcohol? Yeah. Hmm, okay. It... Okay, it didn't react to her. Wait, I thought she was a horror. She's not a horror? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. 
You're asking this to her? Oh my god, she's just... Okay. Wow. Oh. Okay, it's like mentor of a sister, I'm guessing. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, he is in the underground. My god, this is really in like Hmm is this a new is this a new body or is this the same body but it just got older okay or maybe maybe they're waiting for her outside or something that'll be kind of Yep, there you go. Hmm. Wait, oh my god, it's Wait, why is she? Oh, maybe she. Oh no, I, f I realized, Mendoza is not here. It's, this is probably like a fake distraction. Yeah, this is a distraction. Rise up in the morning. So Octavia is going somewhere else, letting her come here. There you go. So it's basically used her as a distraction. <laughs> oh 
Okay, there she is. Just waited for her to. Okay. Mm. What is this place? Okay. There were pillars here before. Hmm. <laughs> that time it was Okay. Um, I feel like, okay. <laughs> oh my God, she's just spying on them. What the hell? Or maybe that's a trick. They're tricking her. I think they're tricking them. What the? What is that? Another tool? I think so. It probably set some kind of trap here. Trap or something that will inform her. Oh, that's how she gets in. Okay. There you go, I knew it. it. It was it was a thing that would inform them. Let's go. Well, you messed up. Ugh. Above? Oh no 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 she sh oh god shit Oh well Oh her story Ah oh. Or let the uh. oh no
You can release it with your blood. Oh. Why, why did she come here to use? Why did she come here and do that? Wait, what? Oh, that's why. Oh my God. Right leg. Oh, that's why I consume my right leg. It's it's gone. Oh my god, that's why. What the hell? <sighs> well, she is probably never going to forgive herself for this is going to eat at her forever. There you go. This is the thing, you know, like, he, he, she's so out of it that she's actually blaming the Makainets while... <sighs> what is happening? Why is he... What? All right, so oh. So It's weird, you know, like I can understand the watchdog center telling them to protect Mendoza only because 
it seems they are like you know like the watchdog center at least like, they kind of focus on the results and the process of doing it they seem like that type of an organization i can understand maybe because of that maybe mendoza is going to come to be of use to them that's why like you know like they gave them the order to protect and help mendoza out i can understand that i don't understand why erman is actually doing that unless and until she he himself finds an actual proper legitimate reason to help him out Elman doesn't isn't a type of person who will just obey orders so I feel like he has a genuine reason and it's it's a genuine reason I feel like it because you know like we've seen Elman before like you know he he his priorities are straight like he knows what it is he's doing and you know like he definitely would not do something which would actually harm them in the longer run so that's why it's confusing me like it, it after seeing Mendoza it seems he's up to no good again so why is he protecting Mendoza is there a deeper reason behind it is is, is Garm and you know Erwin come to some kind of agreement that oh like, you know we're, we're actually going to do this so for now you'll have to protect him but then in this moment our actual plan will start or something like that I mean, if it is something like that I would understand so yeah okay let's wait for it so this episode here um first of all we see alphonse keeping an eye on everyone and we meet a new girl here laura my god i feel like <laughs> like all the characters like you know like that some like you know, who are not the main yeah like who are not the main characters who are introduced like somehow die <laughs> Like here as well, like you know, again, like you know, Lara died and now Laura died. Wow. Oh. Okay, so this girl, she, she's new to the whole thing. She is mess messing up and everything. And um, Octavia, she is helping her out and like you know, giving her instructions, this and that. People are kind of talking bad about uh, Lara, Laura, behind her backs, but. Mm, yeah so that was that whole thing and then we go to <laughs> Leon and Emma comes back to the you know their their uh to the palace <laughs> oh my god that scene was funny <laughs> Alphonse asks so but where is it where is that part okay <laughs> Leon <laughs> Leon, how was Emma? And he's like, what? What are you talking? <laughs> Zarba's like, wait, should I explain? Leon is like, shut up. <laughs> oh my god, that scene, what? Oh, okay. Um, all right, enough about that. We go back in and here we get an explanation that, uh, not explanation, but we get to know from Alphonse that he is like you know like 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 he he's suspecting oh, octavia octavia that's her name uh he's suspecting octavia because you know she's kind of going under underground and it's like staying there and like you know uh, uh, emma does say that oh maybe she's just going there to pray but still you know there is like a chance of something happening so alfonso is kind of keeping an eye on her and other than that they talk about like you know the whole situation like you know uh why they're like you know uh why Armin is actually doing this what could be the reason and uh the surprise like you know that the like you know the uh, the thing that mendoza is actually alive that surprise as well them as well so they're they're kind of uh discussing about everything he talks about how he uh like you know ex examined mendoza's room and he's like the underground temple must also be searched and yeah like then the whole thing with octavia comes up and we shift back to octavia where she is giving you know taking care of the king so 
I'm guessing the king, like, she's not feeding the king anything else anymore. You know, like, that type of, the, the poison that she was feeding her him before. It's, she's not doing that anymore. Uh, because, obviously, Alphonse was keeping an eye on them. So, <clears throat> yeah, and this part was interesting. Um, Emma and Leon comes in, and uh, Alf uh, Alphonse was like, oh, I've brought my friends to meet with you. And he takes the bell and brings it so that he could, we can like signal. Okay, here the wine is treasured for medicinal purposes as well. And he brings it, and using that as a disguise, um, Emma rings the horror detecting thing. Now, I am also curious about this. I was under the impression she was a horror. So, you know, like nothing happened there. So she's not a horror. Okay, I'm sure I'll get my answers in the future when we're going to get more into this. But so she's, she's a normal person. Okay, that's interesting. I, I, I really thought she was a horror up until now. Or something like that you know but so she's a normal person and she's actually helping Mendoza out as a normal person it does make sense after we get to know her like you know backstory in the end you know but still I, I was also surprised here and they are like all right like you know like enough about like you know all of this she's not a horror but we should still keep an eye out we should go to the underground like you know temple this that and like, you know try to figure out what's happening and the next scene that we see uh, Laura and um, Octavia setting the table here's where we kind of get to know that Laura actually reminds her of her sister and we get a little flashback small little flashback as to what happened to Octavia's past and uh, okay so and here we meet our <laughs> you know a lovely mendoza he is looking a little bit older but yeah he doesn't care about that he is as always you know like just focused on whatever he's doing <laughs> and okay so here's the thing okay where is it Yeah, he talks with um, Octavia and we can see that he, he says like I will not toss you aside which I now understand what he was meaning by that. He was meaning uh, after seeing the flashback um, we see you know that scene where the villagers ran away in fear. He was actually referring to that and he's saying like okay I will not do the same thing that they did to you. Now one thing you know I, I'll talk about this after when that part comes when I'm discussing about that part that whole scene with Laura and her uh, not Laura sorry Octavia and her sister there's one thing that is a lit I, I have to talk about here okay so that's like you know, that we see the whole thing um okay about, like her like Octavia giving um, Mendoza information giving him food and taking care of him and we see the the, the tool or whatever that she uses to come out and come you know, get out and get in of that place and now so what actually happened here that means um she used laura as a distraction she told her her that oh you're going to join me doing the same thing you know like bringing water and she brought her with her i think and laura went in probably she told laura that okay you're going to do it from today you know from today and yeah that's what she said i think and she went there and I'm guessing uh, Octavia sneaked in after that. Octavia did her own thing, uh, you know, like gave Mendoza the food, all that stuff. And Laura, at that moment, I'm guessing was probably taking water. And Laura comes out and Alphonse, all of them are there ready. And they, they come in, they're like, oh, I've got you. But then they're like, oh, you're, it's Laura. And... <laughs> And then Laura's obviously Laura doesn't know anything about this whole situation. She she thinks that um, Octavia told her to come here to just take water, and she's like, "Oh, I'm here to take water. The water actually is like you know helps. Uh, like you know, I'm, I feed it to the king. Uh, the king drinks this, 
and Leon also like not Leon Alphonse also takes a little bit of the water drinks it and he's like all right it's it's fine it's, it seems fine um and yeah they come out and Alfonso is like all right maybe it's a false alarm while uh, Octavia was just waiting for like that whole situation to go like and become over after that she'll probably just you know come out and so that was basically a distraction she just used Laura as a distraction and in, in that moment and to like you know like to make the suspicion lower on her and okay so and the seal was also not broken you know, underground we go there the seal was also not broken as said like you know, emma says that and here emma is like okay i find a, this place a little bit suspicious kind of cross trying to see what's happening it goes there goes to the wall and everything zaru was like no i don't feel anything and I understand now why she was doing that because the the entrance was there it doesn't work until and unless uh, Octavia brings that tool with her so <clears throat> thankfully Emma actually put a trap there a trap or like an informer or something like that which would inform them and now I don't know if this was actually them acting them talking in the chap uh, like, in, in, in the in the place talking about how like oh like I feel like you know like we are kind of like you know that was like a false alarm you know they talk about them among themselves about that whole situation they're like yeah maybe we are just thinking about this too much maybe we should stop and Octavia was listening to that was I'm, I'm guessing that was like a trick they, they kind of said that at that moment to lower Octavia's guard I'm, I'm guessing that was what they were trying to do because they were pretty sure that something was happening and they would not give up so easily and that's the reason why she also put the trap there so Octavia we see her giving that information to Mendoza she's like yeah things are starting to die down and I feel like everything will be fine and <clears throat> yeah laura also comes in all that stuff you know like she kind of uh, encourages laura says like yeah you you get flustered too much you know like have more confidence this and that and like it's sad thinking about the next scene what happens like you know like after all that thing and octavia we see octavia go in and you know the the string kind of triggers it's a trap um emma gets like you know realizes that what's happening they come here quickly okay now one thing just a second this part so oh yeah yeah okay okay i understand that part so basically um they they came underground and they saw that the string was actually going up and they're like oh it's actually up they try to go out and Octavia pushes the you know, thing on top of it so that they cannot come out to just buy a little bit of time this part was kind of weirdly done and then we start suddenly go back to the flashback you know like after that part where we see like you know like Octavia's story of how her sister you know, prayed to the gods and her sister was like yeah god will help us and then wolves attack the sister was stuck and now here's one thing that kind of confuses me um uh, octavia says like orletta hurry up and run away with me and she's like no i'll wait i'll wait for god to save us it'll be okay one thing could she have been able to escape this situation like Octavia tells her to escape so I'm guessing there was probably an escape route so it's not that she could not escape she didn't escape is that what's happening here like because if that's the real if that's the case here this whole situation feels extremely weird to me first of all if she could have escaped and she just said like no I'll not escape and I'll wait for God to save us and you know like she, obviously she she didn't survive that and octavia because of that 
hates the hates God or something. Is that what's happening? Because like then then I, I don't know. I feel like that the reason behind her hatred is extremely weird. First of all, like she, she it seems like she had a, a route of escape because her sister does say I might be wrong though. Like correct me if I'm wrong. Like since. Octavia says, like, come on, run away with me. And she's like, no, I'll wait to God for God to save us. This implies, obviously, that they haven't had an escape route. But she didn't escape because she wanted God to come and save her. Like, now here's the thing, you know, like, this is an interesting thing. I feel like um, I've heard, like, you know, this is like a little story I've heard. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a little story here where there's a person like you know, like a, the like you know, it's like heavy rainfall. The person's town or place gets flooded so much that like you know, he's like on top of the roof and he's also going to get submerged. And he's praying to God. He's a very like you know, big follower of God, like you know, very big believer. And he prays all the time. So he's praying to God. He's like, God help me. And we see a person coming in a boat, and he's like, Oh, come with me. I'll help you out. He's like, No, I'll wait for God. God will help me. The boat goes away. In comes a helicopter, and the helicopter, uh, like you know, there's like a lot of, like you know, like the, you know, like the, the rescue team. They come and they're like, "Come on, come with me." You know, like we're going to get you out of here. He's like, "No, God will come and help me." The helicopter also leaves, and the whole place gets submerged. He dies. He goes to heaven. He goes to God, and he's like, "Why did this happen? I believed in you. You did not help me out." And God is like, "I sent two, like you know, like two, like you know, different methods to actually help you out." You did not go with them. I sent like you know people to help you, and you did not go with them. Like this is the thing. The moral of this whole thing is God's help helps those who helps themselves. And I feel like this whole situation is completely like that. She had if if as again I'm saying if I don't understand this part. If she had a way to actually escape, and she did not do that, and she said that no, I'll wait for God to save us. You know. That's that's the moral of like you know the whole thing like you know if if she she doesn't help herself God cannot help anyone God cannot just come down and help you out it's imp that it doesn't happen that way God sends people or sends different methods to us to help us out in different way God's help God helps us out if if like you know if someone comes and give offers us help that's basically God helping us out as well you know that's the method that God helps us. So you cannot escape just to be there and be saved. It's impossible. Like this is how I see this whole situation. So you know, like it's a sad scene. I know that I understand that, but this whole reasoning kind of feels a little bit weird to me. Like she just stayed there because she thought that God is going to come and save us. And not only that, after that whole scene, we can kind of understand Octavia's whole point. Like Octavia, um, like, you know, after that, the people did not come and save the, her. That's why she, she got um, like, you know, um, so like, you know, angry, you can say so disappointed at the um, everyone. And that's why she has this type of a hatred towards others, you know, others who just, you know, just for, for, for like, you know, just did not help them out and ran away. Those those people from her village, um, I can kind of understand Octavia's reason. But but this whole thing that her sister, that part is really weird if it is what I think it is. If they had no other choice, if they were stuck there, then it's okay, you know, like I can understand. If she had no way to run away, then I would understand. But if she had a way to run away and she did not do that, then that's extremely weird. I, f I feel like this whole thing. But, you know, she's a child. I feel like that, like that whole thing. Uh, I don't know, like this, this whole situation is really, like, you know, very complicated, you can say. Like I can also say that, yeah, like Octavia should have just... You know, said something like, "No, you're you're coming with me. You know, you have a like you know way to run away. You listen to me, come with me. Uh, like you know, just or like you know, say something there, and just dragged her out or do something to her. Uh, if they had a escape route, but you know, this this part is. Let me know. Did did they have an escape route or did they did not have one? If they did not have one, then all that I said kind of like you know doesn't work out." Because they didn't have any escape route to run away from. But if they had one, this this is this is not you know like kind of unusual, this whole thing.
But yeah, I understand. I I, I can get like she was a kid, and I guess that's how she can her mind worked or something. I don't know. So yeah, and now that after that flashback, like Octavia does like something interesting here, not interesting, but kind of like you know clever for at least at that moment. She goes. I, I was really confused. I was like, why was she going towards Laura? She goes there. And like I was not expecting her to do that at all because she like you know she she saw her sister in her, so she uses the tool like an you know, Makai um like you know a, a monster comes out a horror, and allows it to like you know tells them to consume, um, Laura. It consumes Laura. Then he tells it to consume her right leg or left leg, whichever what it it was, so that it would seem that the the thing came from the monster, the horror, not her. So, my God, like that whole scene, and they come in like he, she even like you know kind of wakes up the king just so that she can get an alibi. She's like, uh, like you know, wake up, like you know, and the king sees like yeah, she's here, the monster is here, and the king is like, oh, she's saving me. Obviously, when even, like, even though that's not the case, she got her alibi, and all of them came in, they helped her out, and you know her leg is gone. And yeah and i you know like i i i thought like at that and then we get the rest of the flashback where we see the villagers didn't help her out that's why she got disillusioned you know like she doesn't even like you know trust any other people and <clears throat> and uh yeah now i do wonder did alfonso uh, completely like you know all her his suspicion is it really gone on her or is she still suspecting her kind of interested in that and here i thought she was going to blame herself or it's going to keep eating at her the whole thing but like then she starts saying like oh you makai like you know I, what makai nice makai alchemist i hate you damn you makai nice yeah like it's like you know, this whole thing like she's so gone far gone that even though she was the actual one who decided to use the girl she actually blames it on the Makai Knights. She's so far gone. Like, I like th this whole thing. Like, you know, I, 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 I can understand. Like, she's probably just, you know, like her hatred is so deep that even something that she did here, she actually blames it on the Makai Knights. She's like, oh, because they tried to do that, you know, like because they tried to track me, you know, I was forced to kill that uh, child. And the one at fault is the Makai Knights because they were the reason I had to do this. Like, that's basically it. She's basically saying that I had to do this because the Makai Knights forced me to do it. So the Makai Knights are at fault. And she's so far gone. Her hatred runs so deep. It's, it's something like that. She, like, you know, like she, she's not blaming herself, but for, for, at least for her death. You know, not blaming herself, but blaming the Makai Knights for her death. Even though she's the one who took the decision at that moment. Uh, and then, uh, like, you know, in the next part, we see uh, Erman coming in. Erman is like, oh, no, you should not mess, like, you know, try to mess anymore. You know, like, you know, uh, leave Mendoza alone. <laughs> and Leon is like, all right, I'm going to show you who's boss. And he just grabs his sword. And I'm guessing next episode will be father versus son. So hopefully we get some answers about why he's helping Mendoza out. The reason. God, this episode. Wow. Ah, oh, so yeah. Anyways, that's it. So that was my reaction to this uh, episode. This was episode number um, 19 and 20 of Garo Hono no Kokuin. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys next week uh with two more episodes of garo hono no kokuin until then goodbye and have a nice day